Actress, playwright, professor, author, and social activist, Anna DeVere Smith's career has been marked by extraordinary versatility and extraordinary success. In her signature form of documentary theater, Smith first interviews real people and then creates and performs them as characters. One of her most famous plays, Twilight Los Angeles, about the L.A. riots, will be broadcast again on June 12th on the PBS program Great Performances. Los Angeles, 1992. It was like the end of the world. When anger exploded into rage. Black rage! People burning down their own neighborhoods. Anna DeVere Smith turns the words of people who were there. Justice did not work. No justice, no peace. Into a powerful human mosaic of America in conflict. Open your eyes. Great Performances presents an encore of her tour de force, Twilight, Los Angeles. I spoke with Anna DeVere Smith recently about the issues of race and community, about her hometown of Baltimore, and about her work in progress, the Pipeline Project, which focuses on the school to prison pipeline. We have all these statistics that show us that poor kids, mostly black, brown, Native American, are disciplined in ways that might be disproportionate compared to others and get, well, shoved out of school, really. A uh, number of suspensions lead to pretty much a good chance they're gonna spend part of their life in the criminal justice system. And a lot of people in the social justice arena are trying to turn that around. And some of those people approached me about possibly, you know, can art influence this? This Can we get the word out, not just through policy numbers and stuff, but by, by, by a work of art? So I'm using the theater to really expose the problem. But I think that it's becoming more and more apparent, even when the president made his remarks about uh, the events in Baltimore. Towards the end of it, you'll notice that he talked about the school to prison pipeline. So it's really about a generation, a couple of generations, maybe three generations of kids who we're losing. Some people say it's a womb to prison pipelines, really about poverty, some would say. Yeah. Your approach here is a little bit different. This is not a research paper that you're no. doing. Uh, and you've done this in the past with yes. some other projects. But explain to us here how you're going about this. Okay, so I have a large project called On the Road to Search for American Character. My grandfather told me when I was a girl that if you say a word often enough, it becomes you. So for a very long time, I've been trying to become America, sort of word for word, and I've made about 18 plays this way. Uh, some of your audience will remember my plays about the Crown Heights riots and the Los sure. Angeles yeah. riots. Fires in the and Mirror. Also Fires in the Mirror, Twilight. At Los Angeles and um, Let Me Down Easy about healthcare, all of which PBS uh, have filmed and aired. So, um, so it's in that vein that I'm interviewing people, uh, teachers, cops, kids, parents, about what's going on in schools and trying to think about ways with their help of how we can turn this all around. And you also have, have woven in the notion of sort of town hall meetings yes. into that process. How does that work? And well, what do you think, get from that? Well, many of us, uh, many of us are trying to think of ways that art can make a difference in society. And I think one way is to leave more time for discussion, to ask the audience to do more than stand up and clap, to ask the audience to do more than buy tickets. So what's the role of our, what's our role of our community? You know, it used to be churches were the place that people would convene, convene even schools. Um, and now it's sort of hard to think, like where in my community do people really come together and talk about stuff? So. I'd like to see arts institutions become that place. And for me, it's the theater. We, we hear so often that, that you know, one of the, the early victims of budget cuts in the education system is always the arts and the programs that are there. Are you seeing any, any sort of resurrection at all of that? Or are you seeing that problem just even getting worse? I, I don't have the data. I don't, I don't know, you know. Um, and I've been teaching in colleges for most of my career, but we sort of, the word on the street is, of course, the interest in math and science and reading and all of the testing that kids have to go through kind of make it more difficult to have that opportunity. When you get to the end of the pipeline project, what are you expecting to find or what are you hoping to find? Well, I'm finding a lot already. I'm finding out a lot all the way from this morning I spoke with a, a, a doctor at Rockefeller University, a, a neuroendocrinologist, about the effect of, of stress on cognitive development, for example. So there's a lot in science right now about what it, mean, what it would mean to grow up in an environment of poverty, of violence, of trauma, how that might affect your ability to self-regulate enough to sit in a classroom and do the right 
work that's in front of you. And on the other hand, you know, I'm getting stories from teachers who are working very hard trying to make a difference, or even politicians who are working very hard to try to close this gap between rich and poor, for example. Or, you know, what the president talked about again with Baltimore, this underlying tension in our communities that sometimes are full of despair, lack of hope. How are we going to turn that around and get back to that more perfect union that, that we're all about, to get back to that America that, that really gives everybody a chance. So I think a lot of people from a lot of different perspectives are going to say, well, what, what happened? I mean, my hometown's Baltimore. Right. You see what just recently happened. Uh, my staff is there already. Baltimore is a site for the school to prison pipeline. When I was recently at home, I just see this bombed out city. I mean, just this places I walked as a child that are just a disaster. So, you know, in my generation, many of us left those communities. We had new opportunities to go to, uh, you know, sort of fancy colleges and stuff. And I think, you know, it's time to turn around and go, well, what happened? What happened to the dream? And is there anything that I can do to turn it around? We can't afford to just lose people. New York Times had a cover page story above the fold about the disappearing African-American male. It's, it's very sad. And the numbers are staggering. Staggering. So, you know, they're either in the justice system or dead. Dead. In, in that article. Yeah. Let me go back to Baltimore for a second. As somebody who is, as you said, you, you grew up there. You know that town. You know that community. H have there been any lessons of any value, do you think, coming out of what's taken place in Baltimore recently? I think it's too soon. I mean, I think, you know, when I think about the Los Angeles riots, which I, it's a, sort of strange to say you visited. Yes. Yeah. But that's, that's, <laughs> a post-conflict you, community. Oh, no, yeah, but that, yeah. You like, did that. I'm sorry. sure you like, I was covering it. You were you know, covering we were... it. So we both like catastrophe. It's a terrible thing to admit. I think it's But just, they're great learning tools. But they're great. Well, because it's, it's like what happens is everything explodes open, so you can look at it under a different microscope. I did hear that um, one of the representatives, Elijah Cummings, said something very provocative, which is about the kids in the streets, is that they know they will not get the education that they need to survive in this world. Isn't that sad? So, I mean, I hope that with the eyes of the nation on this, it's just more evidence that we need to do something to rehabilitate our institutions so that we can just morally have what we think this country is about. When you talk about, talking about the pipeline project, to wrap up our conversation here, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy going into this, when it's over, what do you hope to get from it? What do you what what should we as ultimately the viewers hope to get? Well, from? I hope in this case that you, the we, become more than viewers. In this case, that they really become doers. That they think of ways in their communities that they can make a difference, that they think about it when they're voting. We have a presidential campaign coming up. Uh, that they think about how they spend their resources, that they think about what they demand for their own children, um, because it, it all has an effect. So I hope that the viewers become doers in this case. And I'm, I don't know the answers, but this project, I'm doing a lot of experimentation with trying to turn the viewer into a doer. Well, your previous projects have been magnificent and have accomplished a great deal. And it's a delight to sit down and talk with you. Thanks great for spending some time with Thank us. Thank you. You'd be well.